Hello everybody, welcome to our look at the BFI releases for April and May. Now we feature the later than planned proposition on 4K UHD Blu-ray by directed by John Hillcote and the Play For Today box set volume 3 on Blu-ray. Now I featured both of these back in February's video, but I'll include those pre-recorded segments here again in case you missed that. New for April we have Liv Ullman's Faithless and classic BBC TV version of 1984 starring Peter Cushing as Winston Smith. And we will also be taking a look at the up and coming Francois Truffaut titles. They are coming to Blu-ray on BFI. In the unforgiving landscape of the outback, Charlie Burns, played by Guy Pearce, is presented with an impossible proposition by local lawman Captain Stanley, played by Ray Winstone, to save his younger brother Mikey from the noose. He must track down and kill Arthur, played by Danny Houston, his increasingly unhinged older sibling. A palpable sense of foreboding builds in the oppressive heat as each character takes on their punishing moral dilemmas and the cycle of violence appears unstoppable. Now this film has an excellent supporting cast consisting of Ray Winstone, Emily Watson, John Hurt, Danny Houston and David Wenham. The film's production completed in 2004 and it was followed by a wide 2005 release in Australia and 2006 theatrical run in the US uh, through First Look Pictures. Now, the film was shot on location in Winton, Queensland, Australia. The film's soundtrack, titled The Proposition, was released shortly after the film in October 2005 and the music was composed and performed by Nick Cave and violinist Warren Ellis. Now it wasn't a big box office draw, unfortunately, but BFI's restored it and the 4K UHD release is a welcome addition to any fan's collection. Newly restored in 4K, the director John Hillcote, who brought us the road in Triple Nine, and writer Dick Cave's modern classic is presented here as a new 4K UHD release along with a Blu-ray disc featuring new and archive features. There's an audio commentary with John Hillcote and Nick Cave from 2006, a newly recorded audio commentary by Alexandra Heller-Nicholas and Josh Nelson. The Making of the Proposition from 2005, a 27 minute behind the scenes documentary. Inside the Proposition from 2005, also 43 minutes long, a series of featurettes looking at the film's pre-production, Shooting the Proposition 2005, 24 minute featurettes on the production and the challenges faced during the filming. An interview with the star Guy Pearce from 2006 and the actor on his approach to the role of Charlie Burns. Also an interview with Danny Houston from 2006, the actor recalling his work on the film. There's stills galleries, original theatrical and teaser trailers and the 2022 trailer. And an 80 page book which is very generous featuring new writing and recollections by John Hillcote, Kat Villiers and Leah Purcell plus essays by Andrew Graves, the composer Warren Ellis, Professor Catriona Elder and Dr Stephen Morgan. That's the proposition as mentioned released later than first announced and it's now available on 4K UHD at HMV and online retailers with a recommended retail price of $29.99. Faithless is a Swedish film directed by Liv Ullman from a script by Ingmar Bergman. The story is loosely based on experiences of adultery from Bergman's own life and it was entered into the 2000 Cannes Film Festival. Marianne Vogler is a successful actress happily married to Marcos, an orchestra conductor much in demand for overseas concerts and devoted to her young daughter Isabel. Now into this easy equation steps family friend David. Now he's a film director notorious for his reckless attitude towards relationships. Marianne's closeness to David develops into attraction and he responds despite his friendship with Marcos. The role of Marianne is played by Lena Endre and Marcus by Thomas Hanson. Now the script was penned by the famous Swedish director Ingmar Bergman, who was great friends of course with Liv Ullman, having used her in so many of his own films including The Passion of Anna, Autumn Sonata, Persona, Hour of the Wolf, Shame, just to mention some. 
Liv Ullman's work up to making Faithless had also been noticed, including her Broadway performance in the role of Nora Helmer in Ibsen's A Doll's House in 1975. Um, and after directing for television, she made her own debut feature, Sophie, for Pathé Films in 1992. Now, her more notable international work recently is the film version of Miss Julie by August Strindberg that was released in 2014 for Columbia TriStar. Awards-wise, Faithless did get some attention, but it didn't win anything at all at Cannes in 2000, although it did get international recognition as it was nominated for the coveted Palme d'Or for Cannes. It did, however, win the Gold Baga Award for Lena Endres' performance as Marianne. Now it's certainly an interesting piece and she clearly draws from having the great Bergman around during the filming and as a consultant of course. And Faithless on Blu-ray comes with supplemental features which are a newly recorded audio commentary by the film critic Adrian Martin, interview with Liv Ullman from 2000, an archive interview with the acclaimed actress and director. The Guardian interview, Liv Ullman from 2001, that's the actress and director, in conversation with film critic and writer Shane Danielson. In conversation with Liv Ullman from 2018, the actress interviewed on stage by Jeff Andrew at BFI Southbank. Original trailer for the film, behind the scenes gallery, a stills photo gallery and an illustrated booklet including a new essay by Sarah Luton and a contemporary review by Philip Strick and also an interview with Liv Ullman by Jeffrey McNabb. Faithless is now available on Blu-ray at HMV, FOP and other online retailers, priced 14 99 1984, of course, is probably one of the greatest examples of 20th century fiction, first published in 1948 by George Orwell. Many creatives have since faced the challenge of making it fly on stage and on film. Now, Michael Radford's 1984 version with John Hurt as Winston didn't quite make it, despite having singular heavyweights in the film like Richard Burton in his very last film performance as O'Brien. Radford's singular vision alienated mainstream audiences somewhat and it was quickly withdrawn. Being very bleak, it didn't sit well amongst the mainstream upbeat Hollywood blockbusters. Now they'd even tried to give it a different soundtrack by the Eurythmics, but that was withdrawn before release. I've always been personally fond of it though, primarily for the bleak desaturated cinematography provided by award-winning cinematographer Roger Deakins. Now, in 1954, the BBC had made a TV version of 1984, adapted for television by Michael Neal, which, to be fair, up to now hasn't really been bettered. British actor Peter Cushing was cast as the central protagonist, Winston Smith, in a black and white retelling of Oceana, beset by war from Eurasia and Astasia, two other fictional landmasses. Now, of course, it's all the more pertinent now because of the current war with Russia and the Ukraine, and how it examines the use of propaganda to brainwash the general populace. Clearly very similar to what Russia's media is doing now to control the impressions its citizens are getting of what is actually occurring in the Ukraine, and of course its justification for the invasion. Now it's the humdrum, almost mechanical existence of the citizens of Oceana who live in dilapidated housing with a central monitor where Big Brother watches their every move. They drink Victory Gin, that's a synthetic mixture designed to subdue their mental capacity, and their work is largely to edit and censor publications and to change the truth of a previous announcement made to support the current state of affairs or indeed to complement it. Children are encouraged to report their parents and siblings for thought crime. Overall arching is the oligarchy where people are taken off to be interrogated in room 101 and then to be reintroduced into society completely rehabilitated. Now Winston falls for a young woman, Julia, and they both go into the proletariat area and commit a sex crime. After that it's only a matter of time before they're both caught and separated for interrogation in the Ministry of Truth, or Mini True. Now, until the early 1960s, the vast majority of BBC TV was performed live. Quite some pressure there. Nonetheless, there was a certain degree of pre shooting taking place in the form of inserts on this film, which could be played into the studio 
and broadcast as part of the play to cover changes of scene or show location material which would have been impossible to actually mount live in the television studio. Now, the teleplay provoked something of an upset. There were lots of complaints about the horrific content, particularly of the Room 101 scene, where Smith is interrogated and tortured by rats, and the subversive nature of the teleplay itself. Now, 1984 has a supporting cast of Donald Pleasance as Sang and Michael Redgrave as O'Connor. Other cast members included Yvonne Mitchell. Now she had starred in the Neil Cartier Wuthering Heights. She plays Julia and Andre Morel, of course, as O'Brien. Wilfred Bramble, later known for his roles in Steptoe and Son and as Paul McCartney's grandfather in A Hard Day's Night, appeared in two roles in the film as the old man Winston speaks with in the pub and as a prisoner later on when Winston is incarcerated. The face of Big Brother was Roy Oxley. Now, Roy Oxley actually worked in the BBC Design Department. He wasn't an actor at all. This small screen landmark has been newly restored by the BFI using original film materials from the BBC Archive and the BFI National Archive, and it's now available to enjoy on Blu-ray. The extensive extras on this disc are newly recorded audio commentary on 1984, and that is by the television historian John Deere, host of Nigel Neal podcast Birdcast with Toby Hadouk and Andy Murray. Nigel Neal, Into the Unknown, that's 72 minutes long from 2022, writer, actor and stand-up comedian Toby Hadouk and Nigel Neal, biographer and programmer Andy Murray, try to unpick who Neal was, what he did and why his work still matters today. Late Night Lineup from 1965, where members of the cast and crew look back on the controversies surrounding this adaptation of Orwell's classic. The Ministry of Truth from 2022, 24 minutes in conversation with the BFI's Dick Fiddy, television historian Oliver Wake, dispelling some of the myths that have grown up around the groundbreaking drama itself over the course of the past half a century. There's a gallery of rare images from the BBC archives, an original script downloadable as a PDF, an illustrated booklet with new writing by Oliver Wake and David Ryan, and a newly commissioned sleeve art by Matt Needle. Now certainly I think the original script included on the Blu-ray as a downloadable PDF should certainly make for an interesting study. In recent years, the BBC in 2013, that's with the Orwell season, gave us Christopher Eccleston as a reassuringly gritty Winston Smith, while Peter Capaldi last year, of course, narrated the audio edition of the book. And the movie version attached to the Bourne Identity from 2002, due to be director Paul Greengrass was going to actually make that, but it was announced a decade ago and it's still to materialise. Something tells me it's not going to happen. But of course, you can't keep a good dystopia down. This year, we see the publication of Julia by Sandra Newman. Now, that's a fresh look at the novel's underused heroine that's approved by the Orwell estate. And that paves the way for other less linear riffs on life on Airstrip One. 1984 is now available from BFI on Blu-ray and it's priced at £14.99. And we have the third instalment in the Play for Today series, that's Volume 3, and six more iconic dramas from the series arriving on Blu-ray for the first time, further demonstrating the trailblazing qualities of these innovative, stimulating and abiding television landmarks. Broadcast between 1970 and 1984, the plays which combine some of the era's finest writing, acting and directing talents were broadcast directly into people's living rooms, regularly challenging viewers and pushing the boundaries of TV drama. Now the plays in this set are Edna, The Inebriate Woman, written by Jeremy Sanford and directed by Ted Kotcheff from 1971. Just Another Saturday, written by Peter McDougall and directed by John McKenzie from 1975. Bar Mitzvah Boy, written by Jack Rosenthal and directed by Michael Tuckner from 1976. The Marish Charity, written by Henry Livings and directed by Mike Newell from 1977. Coming Out, written by James Andrew Hall and directed by Carol Wiseman, 1979. 
and A Hole in Babylon, written by Jim Hawkins and Horace Ove, directed by Horace Ove, 1979. Now, I'm particularly looking forward to Edna, The Inebriate Woman, featuring the brilliant Patricia Hayes and Jack Rosenthal's The Bar Mitzvah Boy, which I watched as it went out live on television as a 50-year-old Presbyterian lad trying to identify with a strange coming-of-age ceremony from another religion unfold on TV in front of me. And it will be interesting to reevaluate this now I'm 60. Place for Today, Volume 3, retails at $44.99 on BFI's site, but we'll likely see an inevitable price drop on Amazon or HMV online retailers. And there's also an accompanying 60-page book with new essays by Kitty Crosson, David Archibald, Julia Wagner, John Deere, Simon McCallum and Kaleem Aptav. And I must mention that a couple of those directors, namely Mike Newell and John McKenzie, went on to make big British films. BFI currently has a Truffaut retrospective taking place at London's South Bank and the following Truffaut films are being given releases on Blu-ray. We have The 400 Blows from 1959, Francois Truffaut's directorial debut, introducing his enduring alter ego Antoine Douanel, played by Jean-Pierre Leo, a misunderstood 12-year-old boy neglected by his parents and mistreated by repressive school teachers who seeks refuge in truancy, petty crime and above all cinema. It's Truffaut's most autobiographical film, widely regarded as one of the all-time coming-of-age movies. And it's a cinematic landmark, of course, that heralded the beginning of French New Wave. This rebellious award-winning milestone presented here on Blu-ray from a new 4K restoration releases on Monday the 25th of April. Starting just before the Great War and spanning three decades, François Truffaut's hugely popular classic Jules et Jim depicts one of cinema's most captivating love triangles. That's between two best friends, the Austrian Jules, played by Oscar Werner, and the French Jim, played by Henri Serre, and the object of their mutual desire, the enigmatic and alluring Catherine, played with verve and sensitivity, of course, by Jean Moreau. Fast, funny and stylish, Jules Egime is a deeply affecting and engaging testament to love, loyalty and freedom, and remains a highly influential landmark of world cinema, releasing on Blu-ray on the 25th of April. And out in May we have La Peau Douce, a successful academic's life is changed forever when a whirlwind affair throws his life into disarray, in Francois Truffaut's celebrated romantic drama. Strongly influenced by the work of Jean Renoir and Alfred Hitchcock, La Peau Douce is one of Truffaut's most subtle and engaging films. It's an exhilarating and suspenseful vision of masculinity in crisis. Featuring a trio of exceptional lead performances and bold Raoul Coutard camera work, the underrated masterpiece thrills and beguiles all the way till its shocking conclusion. It releases on Monday the 30th of May. And finally, we have The Last Metro. In occupied Paris, an actress hides her Jewish theatre director husband to protect him against Nazi persecution in this enthralling exploration of humanity at its best and its worst, featuring mesmerising performances from French cinema icons Catherine Deneuve and Gérard Depardieu. The Last Metro is a powerful character study set against the backdrop of fascist tyranny. An award-winning late career masterpiece from director Francois Truffaut, this thrilling tale of resistance and tolerance is presented in a brand new 2K restoration. And that also releases on Monday the 30th of May. Now it's worth just mentioning that some of these titles are also available in the US Criterion Collection, but of course because they are Region A, on Blu-ray and NTSC format, might be best to invest in the PAL releases coming out from BFI in the UK. They're certainly less costly and easily available. Now, if you want to know more about French New Wave, then look no further than this excellent BFI publication to be released soon, the French New Wave Critical Landmarks. It's a paperback updated and expanded, and it's an anthology of essential texts on the French New Wave movement, featuring writings with the critics and filmmakers who shaped this revolutionary moment in cinema history. It's available from the 14th of July, and it's written by Peter Graham and Jeanette Vonceau, and it's a new expanded edition, as I say. So on that note, I leave you with what will be coming up in June. We've got the Blu-ray release of Descent and Disruption. That's a compilation of the BBC plays from the director Alan Clark. And that includes the famous Scum, 
Elephant and the Firm. It's an 11 disc box set with 10 Blu rays and one DVD, including a raft of additional materials, including an introduction to the firm by David Leland, and of course, extracts from BBC discussion shows Open Air and Tonight, and documentaries and seven audio commentaries. Now, I've got it myself on DVD, but I'll actually be renewing mine and upgrading to Blu ray. It's an absolutely excellent set. I have Descent and Disruption as separate box sets. With the late Peter Bogdanovich's delayed directorial debut, Targets, presented as a brand new high definition remaster, and it's going to be coming out on Blu ray in June for the very first time. Lawrence of Belgravia, an intimate documentary portrait of England's greatest lost musical genius, filmed and directed by Paul Kelly. So that's it. Until next time, from me, it's goodbye, and above all, good viewing. <laughs>